Good morning and welcome to the third Time for Action session here at the Edinburgh TV Festival. I'm Adil Amini. I am a freelance TV producer and also the founder of the mental health support group, The TV Mindset. Over the last few months, um, I'm sure everyone knows that the biggest topic of discussion has been uh, the workforce of our industry its precarious nature, and of course, what the COVID crisis has done to highlight just how difficult our situation is on a day-to-day -day basis. With that in mind, uh, with the help of Donna Tabra from the BBC and Charlotte Black from Channel 4, we launched two Time for Action sessions, the first one with Indies and the second one with broadcasters to work out what we can do beyond just webinars and talking and what we can do to actually implement the changes that everybody seems to be crying out about. There, was, uh, there were things said in those sessions by people that I personally never heard before. Um, for example, Danny Horan um, from Channel 4 said that we need to agree a system of principles of behaviour and reporting for freelancers and an escalation process. Dan Lowe of Channel 5 um, said that you know, we can't just meet once, at, once a year at industry events where everyone is drinking and showing off to discuss these issues. It takes a little bit more effort and a lack of ego and we can solve them. There were notes of optimism in those sessions and I was really proud of, of doing them because it meant that there was, for the first time, a really public need to change. There was a desire to implement a much happier system um, for the workforce. There was also talk of a code of behaviour and a lot of you know, really interesting discussion points. So we set to work. Straight after that session, we realised that we had a list of things that we would like to implement as part of a charter, a freelance charter. And as soon as we started trying to put that into practice, we realised the obstacles that were in the way and also why something like that hasn't been done before. The truth is, it was a lot of work to do in a very short space of time and getting an industry that works in a certain way to shift it in that in a, in a different way was pretty difficult. Um, it requires a lot of collaboration. It requires all parties to be on board. Um, obviously, there's a boring HR and legal sides of things. Um, but I think my takeaway was that every side of this industry and every aspect of it is so scattered and fractured that what it needed was an adaptation in the way that I was thinking. And um, it, what it needed was people to bring all of those fractured and scattered sides together, which is something that I hope that we've done today. Um, and you'll find out more about very shortly. The truth is that, you know, uh, with the webinars, there've been countless webinars over the last few months and people do say the right things in them. Executing them is a different matter and I'm sure even through the course of the Edinburgh TV Festival, you will hear a lot of great talk, but when it comes to actually putting it into action, there are so many roadblocks. There are so many things in the way. There's, uh, you know, implementation in this industry is so difficult because a cross industry standard doesn't exist. A pan broadcaster standard doesn't exist. There's quite a casualization of this industry. And I think we're all probably responsible for perpetuating that. So we could have rushed and we could have forced something through that was, you know, more like a charter. And the truth is it probably would have fallen down. Um, there's, you know, I looked at where we are and what we've achieved. And I thought we have one chance to do this properly. And I don't want to rush into something and force people to do things. And, you know, on the other side, it collapses and people don't engage in this ever again. That's not the way to do it. What it required was to do it in the right way, but with everyone's involvement. It's about looking at each organization's place in this industry and seeing how we can all work together. My, you know, the TV mindset sessions have always been about collaborative and constructive behavior. And that's what we hope to achieve at the end of this session. In a way, it's almost like, you know, turning 20 safes all at once and hoping that the right combination clicks on all of them at the same time. And it's probably, you know, no exaggeration. It has, it has been exhausting to, to get the industry together um, for something like this. So based on something, again, that Danny Horan said, um, there was a suggestion that we need a cohort of people from broadcasters, freelancer groups and indies who meet regularly. That's what we are launching today. Um, and it's called the Coalition of Change. Sorry, the Coalition for Change. It's never been done before. And the work involved to get this off the ground has been immense. Um, it's a historical document. 
that, as I say, it's been, you know, it, it's taken a lot of work to get going, um, but we have a fully signed pledge to lean into this culture change. In a way, it's quite sad that this document that you're about to see is historical because, you know, this is basically the bare minimum that we should be offering our workforce and that we should be agreeing to change. But the significance of all these organisations leaning in is immense. And I'm very grateful to them for investing the time in it and putting their name to it, as it's a real chance to establish the industry's core values and what we believe in and also what we want going forward. So the industry can't change overnight. I know that much. And, you know, I've looked behind the bonnet, of, you know, behind the curtain of all this and under the bonnet, and it is, there's a lot to do. And that burden doesn't lie on the shoulders of just one person or one organisation. We all have to do this together. So we are going to come together and start hopefully implementing some ideas and solutions. And I have to stress that, you know, this isn't another talking shop. It's a chance for collaboration, for solutions. And if anyone knows the work that I do with the TV mindset, um, you know that we have this sort of tenacity of getting results and even getting this far, you know, is quite an achievement. I think there's a need, you know, the, the things that we are covering, there's a need to break this industry down into three things. And that is a professionalization of our industry, a investment in talent, um, particularly diverse talent, and above all respect, you know, both for the workforce and each other on the whole. I've always said with TV Mindset as well is that we just don't, we don't just want a seat at the table. I want to build a brand new table where everyone who's invited has equity and has input in the decisions that, may, that are made that affect us all. Um, you know, we talk about not wanting the worst to happen, but the truth is the worst did happen. It happened, as Dan Lowe said in the second session, it happened with Sarah Mulvey 10 years ago. It happened two years ago with Terence Woods, who's still missing. And these incidents are a collective failure on all our parts. The industry really should have woken up then and we should have had that desire to change. Rather than a crisis that affected all of us, it should have been these incidents. And, you know, all we can say is never again. You know, we hope that we can make an industry where these incidents don't happen ever again. So we're creating a space, you know, COVID gave us a chance to create a space for pause and for care, concern, and again, following up on the words um, that have been said in various webinars. And with that in mind, um, I'm just gonna share my screen and unveil what we have today. This is the TV Mindsets Coalition for Change, a pan-industry group uh, to improve freelance working practices. So I'm just gonna read out what, what's um, written here. We, the undersigned, believe that every freelancer working in our industry deserves decent working conditions and that we should all advocate a culture that promotes respect, professionalism and investment in people. The best creative content will come from an industry that puts people first, celebrates a difference and enables us all to thrive. Ours is an industry made up of a huge range of different companies, broadcasters and talented people, and we all have a role to play in shaping the way we work. Today, we commit to forming a coalition for change that will meet every quarter until December 2021, starting in September 2020 with a review 12 months from now, which I'll add will hopefully be at the Edinburgh TV Festival. As part of the Coalition for Change, we will aim to discuss issues that impact on the collective workforce, including, but not limited to, employment and recruitment practices. So I'm just going to elaborate on, you know, some of the, there was an earlier draft where we, we did elaborate on all of this. So I just want to read a bit of that out. Um, so employment um, and recruitment practices, so that includes uh, advertising all jobs protect and practicing transparent recruitment. Health and safety, so advocating healthy working practices, manageable hours and flexible working. Workplace culture, by which we mean eliminating bullying, harassment and racism on a cross broadcaster level, um, as well as ableism and discrimination of any kind. Um, and that includes, but is not limited to, management training and reporting facilities. Um, obviously race and diversity, uh, key issue as well at the moment and making sure that the workforce is diverse but also that um, you know by diversity we also mean you know sp a special focus on disability as we've realized um, one of the most marginalized groups in the industry 
Um, bullying and harassment, again, all included there. Training and talent progression. So that includes um, a collective commitment um, to freelance talent progression and also looking at just general um, you know, uh, feedback on jobs, that kind of thing. Uh, new talent, so abolishing unpaid internships and opening up the industry to new and diverse talent in a more sustainable way, I think, is the key. Again, the, the emphasis on diversity there isn't, um, I don't want to understate that in any way. And of course, mental health and well-being, which is one of the reasons the TV Mindset started and which I believe all these other aspects link to. Very quickly, I just want to read out the list of members who have agreed to be part of this, um, and then I will explain the plan going forward um, and what to expect from us. So just um, going down the list that I've got in front of me here, obviously we have all the broadcasters, BBC, ITV, Channel 4, Viacom, CBS, uh, STV, Sky, and UK TV, who obviously are all doing great work in their own ways, um, you know, whether it's to do with diversity or looking at internal policies, you know, they, they are there, they're at the table, they want to be part of the change. PACT, um, obviously representing the Indies, and I want to give a special mention actually to Anthony Patel, who has been so helpful in this process, but also has been, you know, implementing things at PACT, such as mental health training for managers and how you know, they can uh, help their workforce. Um, also, PACT are responsible for getting the industry back on its uh, feet with their endless negotiations with the government. Um, so you know, we're very grateful a lot of us are able to work thanks to the work that PACT are doing. Back to um, Philippa Child and Bali Khalsa, um, particularly Bali, who came up with the idea for the Coalition for Change and the name, so I owe her um, for that one. But Back to have been there for the workforce. Um, you know, they suggested this collaborative approach, and both Philippa and Bali, in particular, you know, and everyone at Back to have been so, um, you know. Great with with freelancers, with campaigning at every level, and you know they're coming up with a new deal as well. But you know I'm a member of Beck too, and I, I strongly recommend other people join um, as well. The uh, so we've got screen skills. Again, I don't think they need any introduction um, when it comes to uh, the work that they've been doing and the sessions they've been putting on um, training for freelancers. So really grateful to have them on board, and there's a lot of exciting things to come from them. The film and TV charity, again, with the funds that they provided and their whole picture program that is soon to be um, launching properly. Um, also, they, they, they will be piloting a few things with their member organisations. So hopefully we can see some of these changes um, in practice very soon. Um, and again, doing great work. We also have um, various other groups that have joined. And again, it's that thing of getting everyone um, with a voice at the table. So um, that includes people like Beaver PD and Directors UK, again, who've been doing a lot of campaigning around excluded freelancers and created some absolutely heart-wrenching videos about people leaving the industry and surveys. Um, Share My Telly Job, who have recently launched their time campaign, which monitors working hours in TV. So again, we can look at you know, what comes out of that and where things can possibly change. Um, and again, women in film and TV as well, doing a lot for women and, you know, again, talent retention in that department, uh, putting a lot of sessions on, doing a lot of work. Um, the unit list, Judwin Stanley, who everyone knows, I believe, um, you know, her work for new talent is, uh, is second to none. And she's been, you know, been doing this way before the TV mindset. Um, so it's great to have her on board. TV Collective, Simone Pennant, Michelle Matheson, um, both doing incredible work for black, Asian and minority ethnic uh, TV freelancers. The sessions they've put on have been invaluable and I'm really excited to have them on the table um, to talk about diversity as well and, and really push for change. And finally, um, Disabled People in TV, uh, a group for disabled people and um, run, uh, well, co-run by one person uh, who I know really well called Caroline O'Neill and I believe is an absolute force for good. Everyone should know who she is. Um, but they have signed with a proviso, which I'd like to read out as well, because I want this to be very open and honest. Um, disabled people, people in TV are extremely concerned by the failure to explicitly mention disability within this coalition agreement. Disabled people form the most underrepresented groups among those ostensibly protected by current legislation, both on legislation, both on and off screen. Through the return of this agreement, we insist this concern be brought to the table with clear discussion as to what broadcasters plan to do specifically to address this industry failure. For me, you know, I want to read stuff like that out because that's what this coalition is all about. It is about 
openness. It's about transparency. It's about doing better, constantly doing better, constantly reassessing whether we are doing enough and never resting on laurels at any point because until the industry, you know, is or is it, its mental health does improve. So I, I thank Caroline and say with people in TV for for sharing that because I think it's so important. Um, so this this document will be uh, available on our socials after this session. I'm aware for um, that we're running out of time. Um, so the plan at the moment is that we will be setting up a meeting with um, the organisations listed here and that we um, will want this to be an open process. You know, it's not just all of the people on this list who are just going to go to a closed room. Like we will be asking people what they want to see. If you're a member of one of these organisations, come and talk to you know your representatives or come talk to me and say what you want discussed at the table the good thing about you know they're not they're not being too prescriptive as well is that we can move with the times if there's you know something you know god forbid another crisis that we need to roll with you know we can do that but we've given ourselves 18 months and a lot of time and a lot of energy to really commit to seeing some change um it is a historic moment and I really hope that we can deliver. It's been quite um, a task getting broadcasters and stakeholder groups together in this way, but seeing it on the page there, you know, excites me and I hope it excites everyone else to, you know, really believe in, in the, the fact that our industry can be better. Very quickly, I would just like to thank a couple of people. Um, obviously, firstly, uh, Donna Tabera who um, everyone in the industry seems to know an absolute force for good and very quickly in the crisis um, organized the uh, free training for freelancers through screen skills and she has just been an incredible powerhouse from the first broadcast debate to then having the idea for the time for action um, sessions and just being an absolute dynamo the industry is incredibly lucky to have her uh, less of a public figure, um, but still equally important, is Charlotte Black, Black from Channel 4. And I cannot tell you how much of a rock Charlotte has been through this process. Um, there's been, from my end, a lot of tears, a lot of anxiety, a lot of banging my head against the wall. And Charlotte is has just been there. There's been, you know, we've been on the phone on weekends, 10 o'clock at night, cancelled holidays, cancelled my break as well, you know, even though my own mental health was suffering. And that is down to the empathy of Charlotte and um, Donna. You know, they have, you know, if, if, if something comes of this, the, um, you know, every freelancer owes them either a drink or, you know, a, a, a hamper or something because it's down to their empathy and their championing um, that this has been able to, um, you know, take off. And we're really, really grateful to them. Um, and it has come at, you know, personal cost to me as well. It's, it's, you know, it's funny as a brown man in TV, I know that um, it was uh, always going to be difficult going against the grain and trying to make a change, but we are here. And very quickly, just to sign off, um, I will say, look, this is the chance to build the industry the way that we want. I, you know, we're not ever going to please everyone. And I do apologize in advance if, if we, um, haven't covered everything there's still a lot of work left to be done uh, the good thing is that we can now do it all together and i will just say that look change doesn't happen with the flick of a switch and even in our daily lives right now it will be the hundreds of tiny revolutions that take place in our own space whether it's about a job or feedback or bullying or a microaggression um, but i want to leave you all with the hope that the tide is turning and the mindset is changing thank you